Hello everyone, welcome to Gator Space Academy. In this video, we are going to see about Gator Space 2024 Space Dynamic Solutions. Before starting this video, I would like to explain about Gator Space Academy. We provide coaching only for Gator Space exam. The programs that we offer at Gator Space Academy are Gator Space Classroom Program, Gator Space Online Program, Live as well as Recorded Classes, Gator Space Postal Program, and Gator Space Test Series Program. See, we are dedicated coaching center for Gator Space exam. We don't deal with any other branches. Coming to the res results, Gator Space Academy consistently producing top results through our classroom program students. And we are going to start a new batch for Gator Space 2025-26. It's live online classes from this Feb 18th. So those who want to join for Gator Space 2025-26, for this first batch, they can avail this early bird discount of 10%. Now let's start this session. Surprisingly this year, they asked 6 marks from Space Dynamics. 2 1 mark questions and 2 2 mark questions. Let's read this question. The acceleration of a body traveling in a straight line is given by, acceleration is given where V is the velocity and C1, C2 are positive constants. Starting with an initial positive velocity V0, the distance traveled by the body before coming to the rest for the first time is. They said that the body is traveling from point 1 to 2 in a straight line. And acceleration is given, okay. And initial velocity, they said that it is V0. And uh, final velocity is rest. That means it will be V2 will be equal to 0. And V1 will be equal to V0, right. And uh, they are asking us to find the distance. So basically, we can solve this question by three methods. The first method is most of the students try to solve question in this method. That is, they gave us the acceleration, right? So how they will solve the question? Rate of change of velocity is equal to acceleration. So from here, we have the conditions at point one and point two. We can integrate this and find what is the velocity from here. Again, from this, like velocity is nothing but rate, rate of change of displacement. From there, again, by using conditions at point 1 and 2 by integrating separately by using variable separable method we get what is the distance okay so this is a very lengthy method and second thing is if you observe the acceleration we have a v square term so whenever we have like uh, if we have v square term and if we integrate for this two two stage process then this will become a very, very big uh, derivation as well as it takes a lot of time to solve this question by this method what is the second method by using the options directly it is the distance so we can uh, solve it for two times and finally we can get the acceleration so if that ac acceleration is matching by in by any of these options that is the right answer but that is also not the suggestible method the reason for that is we cannot do trial and error for this one mark question and waste our time so what is the easiest way to solve this question see here we know that rate of change of velocity is acceleration so i can simplify this equation or I can modify this to solve this equation like acceleration equal to dv by dt. So if I multiply this equation and divide by ds, okay. So this is a equal to dv by ds and this is ds by dt. So what is ds by dt? This is nothing but velocity. Rate of change of displacement is nothing but velocity. Now if I substitute this equal to dv by ds into v. Now I can substitute the acceleration. Uh, so this is nothing but minus c1 minus c2 v square equal to dv by ds into v. So if you use variable separable method and uh, we can apply the conditions at point 1 and 2, we can directly find what is our distance, right? So this is ds equal to dv or v into dv by minus c1 minus c2 v square okay now if i take limits this will be okay initially this will be zero to some distance so let us take s1 and velocity i know that initially it is v0 because initial velocity is given and final velocity is zero okay now if i integrate this directly i will get the solution now further if I want to simplify this, I can use substitution method or you can directly integrate, no problem. To make it better understanding, I will use substitution method to solve. Okay. 
So this I can write it as, so directly I am writing here it as S1 equal to integration of V0 0 minus dV by C1 plus C2 V square. Okay. So if I take substitution as C1 plus C2 V square equal to U, then du by dv is nothing but constant 0 plus 2v into c2 right now i want to substitute dv so what will be this term dv equal to du by 2c2v now let's substitute this here okay substitute this here what i get so s1 equal to integration of v0 to 0 and minus v in the place of v i am substituting this du 2 c2 v and divided by we have this total term as we consider it as u so this v this v gets cancelled so s1 equal to integration of v0 0 i am taking minus 1 by 2 c2 out so this is du by u so integration of du by u is nothing but log u minus 2c2 ln u okay and the limits are v0 and 0 so further if i simplify this is minus 1 by 2c2 upper limit minus lower limit ln first let me substitute this u value what is u c1 plus c2 v square okay 0 and v0 now what will be my answer? So S1 equal to minus 1 by 2C2. Okay. If I take upper limit, so here this term gets 0 and we I'm I will be left with ln C1. Okay. Plus sorry, upper limit minus lower limit minus ln of C1 plus C2. In the place of V, we have to substitute V0. So V naught square. So this is the answer. Now see, if I take this minus inside, this will be S1 equal to 1 by 2C2. Okay. And this is minus ln C1. Okay. And this will be plus ln C1 plus C2 V naught square. Okay. Now this is log A minus log B. So this will be S1 equal to 1 by 2C c2 and this is log a by b c1 plus c2 v0 square by c1 so the final answer will be 1 by 1 by 2 c2 ln i'm writing here again 1 by 2 c2 ln okay this c1 by c1 is 1 plus c2 by c1 v0 square so this is the right answer for this question okay so we have that here okay so this is plus not minus so 1 by 2 c2 ln of 1 plus c2 by c1 v naught square okay now let's see this next question let's see this question this is a msq question asked for one mark which of the following statement is or are correct about a satellite moving in a geostationary orbit so look at the first option the orbit lies in the equatorial plane yes that is the right answer this is the equator of the earth now you can see that this orbit is in the equatorial plane right so time period of the motion is 90 minutes the second option is wrong what is the time period of geostationary orbit it is 23 hours 56 minutes so the second option is wrong so what is the third option the satellite is visible from all parts of the earth this is also wrong see these are Geostationary orbits are high altitude orbits. Mainly these are used for surveillance, navigation, telecommunication purpose. So that is the reason it is having the time period same as Earth. Okay. So if this satellite is placed here, here, here or the backside of this Earth, nobody can see this satellite. Right. So the third option is wrong. So what is the fourth option? The orbit is circular about the center of the Earth. Yes. You can clearly see that if you take the center of the earth and you can see that that orbit is in circle. So this is the very good and easy question uh, in the space dynamics.
so this is for one mark okay now let's see the next question this question was asked for two marks for this question is a nit question okay let's read and understand the question then we will solve the question okay consider an artificial satellite moving around the moon in an elliptical orbit so this is moon okay and this is elliptical orbit okay the altitude of the satellite from moon surface this is the keyword from the moon surface at the perigee is 25 kilometers okay and the apogee is 134 so the point which is nearer to the body is called perigee and point which is away from the body is called apogee i hope you all know this right and uh, what did they give they said that the altitude of perigee and apogee from the moon surface so they have taken they have given us this data from the surface to the point so perigee is 25 and from the surface of moon to the point this is given as 134 okay and uh, assume the moon to be spherical with a radius of 1737 kilometers now they have given us the radius of moon which is equal to 1737 okay the trajectory is considered with reference to a coordinate system fixed to the center of mass of fixed to the center of mass of the moon of the moon okay the ratio of the speed of the satellite at the perigee to that of apogee so basically they are asking us to find vp by va so this is the question see whenever we are if you know this point then you can easily get two marks here whenever we calculate apogee distance and perigee distance we have to consider from point to center of this body this body can be moon earth or any any body okay so we will always consider this from the center of this body okay if you know this one point then easily you can solve this question okay this is the only trick that they used in this question so what is rp now you tell me rp equal to so 25 plus 1737 so this is equal to uh, 2 1 3 4 5 6 okay 1 1 kilometer right now what is ra ra is equal to so we have to calculate from point to center of this body right so this is 134 plus 1737 so this is 1781 1871 by conservation of angular momentum we can easily solve this question what is that by conservation of angular momentum we can write m vp rp equal to m va ra right if you know this easily you can solve the question now they are asking us to find what is vp by va so vp by va equal to so this is ra by rp so what is ra here 1871 this is 1762 if you solve this you will get answer 1.06 okay so 1.06 is the right answer for this question so if you look at this question the only thing that they did is they gave the distance from the surface of the moon so students if they try to solve by taking rp equal to 25 and ra equal to 134 definitely they have done the mistake and uh, they will get the wrong answer okay so this is how you need to understand the question then solve step by step now let's see the next question let us see the last question of the space dynamics first we will read the question and we will understand this question was asked for two marks and it is a mcq question at a point in the trajectory of an unpowered space vehicle moving about the earth the altitude above the mean sea level is 600 kilometers so this is given this is nothing but 600 kilometers above mean sea level and the speed with reference to the coordinate system fixed to the center of the mass of the earth is 9 km per second so the fired velocity with respect to mean sea level is given as 9 km per second 9 km per second assume that the earth is sphere with a radius so the radius of earth is given 6400 km and the gm of earth is given 3.98 into 10 to the power of 14 meter cube by second square 
now they are asking us to find what is the trajectory how to find trajectory if this velocity is equal to escape velocity then this trajectory is parabola if this velocity is greater than escape velocity then the trajectory is parabola if this velocity is equal to orbital velocity then the trajectory is circle and if this velocity is less than escape velocity and greater than orbital velocity then this is ellipse now let's find what is orbital velocity and escape velocity so orbital velocity is under root of gm by r so what is r here radius of earth plus h this okay so v not equal to orbital velocity equal to what is gm value 3.98 into 10 to the power of 14 divided by so what is radius of earth radius of earth is 6400 plus 600 which is 7000 into 10 to the power of 3 why i have converted this to meters because here you can see that gm is in meter cube by second square so we will get v not or orbital velocity equal to now we will see what is escape velocity see we know that escape velocity of earth is 11.2 kilometer per second but this is the second case of escape velocity where we have to calculate escape velocity at certain height from the surface of the earth okay so we escape velocity equal to under root of 2 gm by r again r is nothing but radius of earth plus h now find what is escape velocity this is under root of 2 times of what is gm 3.98 into 10 to the power of 14 divided by 7000 into 10 to the power of 3 so v escape equal to orbital velocity i have calculated this value i will directly write here 7.54 km per second and this is 10.66 km per second okay now if you look at this diagram you can clearly see that this velocity is not greater than escape velocity so this first option of hyperbola is ruled out now this velocity is not equal to escape velocity so the second option parabola is also eliminated now this velocity is not equal to orbital velocity so this option also ruled out now if you look at this option this velocity is less than escape velocity and greater than orbital velocity so what is v here 9 what is orbital velocity 7.54 and what is ve 10.66 so this option it satisfied so the trajectory will be ellipse okay so this is all about space dynamics solutions of gate 2024 aerospace paper okay thank you so much for watching this video and those who are aiming for gate aerospace 2025 26 we are starting a new batch on 18th feb okay live interactive classes and those who are interested can enroll in that program and for this first batch we are giving a early bird discount of 10% thank you so much for watching the video again kindly share this video with your uh, friends those who gave this exam on 10th feb okay and uh, do subscribe to our youtube channel and uh, join our telegram channel where we post regular information related to aerospace and aeronautical engineering like jobs internships and other other things related to aerospace and aeronautical